Hey guys, Frosted Knives here, back with another book review. And today we're going to be reviewing a book that uh, many of you have requested over the years that I just haven't gotten around to reviewing yet. Today we are going to be taking a look at Stephen King's Desperation. Now, Stephen King's Desperation, for want of a better term, is one of his two twinner novels. Uh, this was released, uh, written and released uh, around at the same time as Richard Bachman's The Regulators. And what we mean by twinner novels is that he took the same cast of characters and put them in both novels, but he put them in different situations in both novels. So one was published under his name, one was published under his pseudonym's name. And if I recall correctly, I do, I have read both. And if I recall correctly, I remember not liking The Regulators as much as Desperation. But today we're going to be talking about Desperation. Um, so here we have the paperback. This was published in 1990, I want to say five or six. Um, 96, 1996. Paperback clocks in at, I got pages falling out of my paperback. Paperback clocks in at 500 and 45 pages. I also have it here in big honking um, hardcover, which has a really awesome uh, cover art for, for the hardcover. And the hardcover is significantly longer, clocking in at 685 pages. And I'm always amazed, you know, at how much bigger hardcovers are compared to soft covers but here they are the two covers of desperation um and i will say right off the bat that um i've read this a, a couple of times i i enjoy this book quite a, quite a lot actually i i enjoyed this book uh immensely um so and, and and the story in it is very simple i will also say that this is as close to a strictly sort of religious story as Stephen King has ever gotten. And what I mean by a strictly religious story is that this is a, a, a straight tale of good versus evil, God versus the devil, uh, with miracles and delusions and preaching abounding in, in the book. Um, it is, a, it is ve unusually, I guess, un unusually religious for a Stephen King novel. Not that that's a bad thing. Um, you know, the, the last one that came sort of close to that was The Stand, right? With the, with the f a flag and Mother Abigail and good and evil, God and the devil and the good guys and the bad guys. This one, I think, um, is a much smaller cast. This is a much smaller cast of characters, but I think the religious overtones in this book outweigh what we saw in The Stand. And not that that's a bad thing. I don't want to say that that is a criticism because that's not a criticism. It is just very obviously, it's almost like, not a parable, but, you know, well, maybe you would call it a, a parable. Maybe it's, it, we could, that's a, a good word to use. So, um, the story is about, the, the, there's a main cast of characters, and these are the same cast of characters that appear in both books. Uh, there's the Carver family, Ralph, Ellen, David, Ralph and Ellen, the mother, father, David, the son, and um, the daughter that I, I can't remember her first name, but they call her Pi. Um, there's Mary and Peter Jackson. There's Tom Billingsley. There's Johnny Marinville, Steve Ames. Um, and then there's a, a few others. And there's Collie and Trajan. So those are the main cast of characters that appear in sort of both books in, t in different roles in both books and in different situations in both books. But the story in this is actually very simple. This takes place in a little mining town in Nevada called Desperation. Desperation, right? And, and that's also sort of the theme of the book, right? All of these people are desperate to get the hell out of Desperation. And so Desperation Nevada is a mining company... And the Diablo Mining Company has been working on the China Pit. They've reopened the China Pit. It's been closed for many a year due to a mining accident and deaths that have happened due to a mine cave-in. 
they reopened the mine, they started mining again, they blew a hole into a secret chamber, they let out an evil demonic force that uh, got loose from the China pit, um, and that demonic force is, for lack of a better name, is known as TAC. It possesses people, and it managed to possess uh, some of the workers. It kind of hops from body to body as it reuses up it ho its hosts and needs a new, a new host and goes from body to body. It wound up slaughtering the town of Desperation, all of the, the populace, um, to the point where it needed to start getting people from the outside, started collecting people from the outside uh, to get new host bodies. And so... Uh, Kali and Trajan is uh, the town cop, and it's the last host that it possessed, killed, uh, and it started bringing in, and that's who started bringing in people. It needed people, fresh bodies from the outside, and so they, they collect all of these people, the Carver family, the Jackson family, Tom Billingsley, who's a veterinarian, Johnny Marinville, who's a writer, uh, brings them in and basically wants to use them as cattle. David Carver, the son of the Carver family, it's a very religious young man, and the religious overtones in him is so obvious, so blatant. He's very much sort of like a Jesus figure. Um, he performs miracles in the book, classic miracles, um, healing the sick, multipl multiplying the fish and the bread to feed people, uh, those kinds of miracles. I mean, classic miracles. He's, he's, he's sent to desperation by God to stop Tack. And that is, that is his mission. And he has to gather his disciples, his apostles around him, these people that are also trapped with him, uh, to convince them to, that, that God's plan is that they should stop Tack from escaping and, and they need to get it and lock it down into the China pit. Um, that, that's, that's literally, literally the story. It's very simple. It's very classic. This evil entity has escaped, has terrorized people, has killed people, and is now this group of folks that needs to confront it and stop it. Um, again, Stephen King works well when he works with a small cast of characters. And this is a small cast of characters. And this is a very straightforward story. Point A to point B to point C. Um, and he works well in those confines. Um, and this um, is was sort of considered a, a return to form for Stephen King, right? He went back, when this was published, he went back to his old, sort of his old style of writing. Um, the book is very violent. The book is very bloody. The book is very brutal. There's a lot of deaths in the book. There's a lot of graphic violence, graphic brutality, a lot of blood. A lot of gore. I think they even make a, a note of that in one of the little clips that they put on here. Um, and, and so that is sort of considered a return to form. Prior, before this, Stephen King has sort of gone off and started branching out and doing, you know, other different things. I think, you know, like uh, Gerald's Game and Dolores Claiborne and Rose Matter and, and those stories. And he's sort of gotten away from what you would consider supernatural horror. This is a return to form for him. Straight up, supernatural, brutal, violent, bloody horror. And it works. It works really well. It's really well written. Written, it grabs you from the beginning and it pulls you along. I mean, the book literally starts, and I don't want to spoil too much, but the book literally starts with Peter and Mary Jackson driving down Highway 50 just past the town of Desperation and they see a dead cat nailed to a speed limit sign. And once you see that imagery, you know you're in for a rip roaring ride on the Stephen King horror coaster. And, and that's what you get. Um, the characters are really well done. Johnny Marinville, the writer, plays the doubting Thomas character very well. He, he doubts the godlike powers of David Carver. He doubts the mission. He doubts that this kid is a, a vessel of God. But, you know, at the end, he sort of comes around to David's way of thinking. 
Um, the book ends with a lot fewer characters than the book starts with. There aren't many survivors in this book. There are some. Um, but that's to be expected in a book where the vessels of God are going to destroy the vessels of the devil. Tack! I see eyes like holes. Um, so, this book, also, there's two other things I want to talk about in this book. This book um, return, features the return of a character that we saw in Rose Matter. So, Cynthia Smith, who we last saw uh, at Daughters and Sisters in, Ro in Rose Matter, one of the people that survived the, uh, the attack by Norman Daniels when he was going after Rose. Uh, she winds up in this book. So we get to see more of Cynthia Smith. So if you liked Rose Matter and you want to see, see more of one of the characters in that book, you get to see the continuing story of Cynthia Smith in here. Uh, and, and it's interesting, right, that, they, that he chose her, a woman from a book that he wrote about domestic abuse and being hunted by, you know, men. And now here we are again. She winds up in Desperation, Nevada, being hunted by... A bear of a man, Kali and Trajan, the cop who's possessed by Tack. Um, so that that's interesting. She she knows, right? She has the experience. She 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 has that background where she's very much aware of the brutality that one human can exert on another human. So she's a survivor. She's a survivor, and so she knows how to survive. Um, and even though this is a supernatural, she still knows how to survive. So so we see that. So that, that's an, a, a nice tie-in to one of his prior books. The other thing that I want to mention is that this is one of his Dark Tower tie-ins. So this book ties into the Dark Tower, as well as ties into Rose Matter. Um, and the way that it ties into the Dark Tower is that, so in the China Pit where... Tack. Tack is an extra-dimensional being. So Tack comes from the multiverse, right? Tack probably comes from the same place where it came from. These multi-dimensional beings that live in the spaces between worlds, right? Not that Tack is the same as it, but that Tack is an extra-dimensional being probably coming from Todash space, in between worlds, same way that it came to Derry from in between worlds. Tack comes to our world from Todash space. And it doesn't say that in the book, but when you talk about the space between worlds and the and the multiverse, you're talking about Todash space and the creatures that live in Todash space. And so in the China pit. They have what they describe as an, it's called an inny, I-N-I, an inny. And they call that the well of the worlds. And that's where Tack is coming from. He comes out of this, you know, and, and the, the, the opening for it is too small for him to come through physically. He has to come through supernaturally, spiritually, to possess people. So, not that it's an, uh, a thinny, because it's not a thinny. But this, this thing that they have, this well of the worlds, is obviously an opening between our world and the multiverse. And a, a, play, a conduit where beings from Todash space and the multiverse can sneak through and get into our world. Um, the language that he speaks, the Candelac and the Himem Tau and, and all that language and that Tack has is... The language of the un they call it the language of the unformed. At one point, he does mention the Cantoy in the book, which, as we know, that is a reference to the low men from the Dark Tower. He mentions the Cantoy. Um, but the language that he speaks is also, you know, the language, I guess, of the unformed, the unformed creatures that lurk in that space between worlds. Also, it's good to mention that. Not too far from Desperation, Nevada, is the Desatoya Mountains. And if you remember correctly, in your Dark Tower travels, in the Little Sisters of Illuria, the village of Illuria, which is literally in Roland's all in all world, uh, the little 
the, the, the village of Eluria sits not that far or right next to the Desatoya Mountains. So the Desatoya Mountains appears in both worlds, in our world and in Despera right next, right outside of Desperation, Nevada. So it's physically in Earth and it's physically in Roland's world. So there, there's your Dark Tower connection, right? This is heavily influenced by the tower to, to a degree. But it's also heavily influenced, and it's unusual that Stephen King takes this religious theme. He's he's usually he he takes a, a twisted version of religion when he writes about religion and talks about how religion can corrupt and and whatnot. But in this book, it's about the faith of a young boy, the vessel of God, and how he was chosen for one purpose, which was to stop Tack. And so to you know. Not that it's bad, but to see that Stephen King has taken the other side of the religious coin and has given us a book that is uh, literally like The Stand, the battle between good and evil, with humanity, you know, in the trenches, and humanity as the offering, and humanity as the soldiers in the, uh, the war of the Almighty taking on the evil of tack. Um, it's a really good book. I enjoy this book immensely. And if you like Stephen King's original tour de force writing, um, if you like the gritty, grisly, brutal, violent, bloody, supernatural horror that Stephen King used to bring to the table, then you're really going to enjoy this book. I gave this book a 5 out of 5 on Goodreads. And I'm going to read The Regulators, but I remember, and I've read this more than I've read The Regulators. I don't remember The Regulators a lot. I remember liking this a lot more than I liked The Regulators. So we'll see if that's still the case. Um, but the characters are terrifying. The, the 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 evil entity tack is really interesting really I think unique in a way um, I like how he tied it to the tower I like I'm not sure why he chose to have a character from Rose matter wind up in this book but I liked his choice I liked his characterization um, when the characters are taking the tour through desperation, trying to unravel the mystery and finding the, 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 what's left behind and finding the grisly evidence, um, it's really well written. It, is, it can be very terrifying. It can be very brutal. Things that you see and that he shows us are horrible things. Um, and even though... Um, the book is super religious, right? We talked about how King sometimes takes the religious tact and how it can corrupt people. He still doesn't give religion a pass, right? He still doesn't advocate really for religion because the main sort of rule or theme in the book that David Carver, there's a quote in the book, there's, a, there's a, a, a quote towards the end, which is interesting. Um, they talk a lot about the nature of God, and David wrestles a lot about with the nature of God in the book, and, and why does God allow people to die, certain people to die, and why doesn't he save certain people? Why do some people survive, some people don't, and all that. And the big theme that David Carver realizes in the book is that God is cruel, that your God can do all of these things and your God can save these people. But sometimes God is cruel. And that's why certain people die. That's why God didn't save his sister. That's why he allows death and destruction to survive. And David Carver learns the lesson that, that God is cruel. And the one thing that they mentioned at the end of the book, which I think, find is very interesting that David has to wrestle with, and Johnny Maraville tells David this, he says, he says to him, he says, God is cruel, but you don't know how cruel God can be. God is so cruel, this is a paraphrase, God is so cruel that sometimes he lets us live. He doesn't let us die because that's too easy, right? 
That's too easy. That gets you out of the world. That gets you out of life. God is so cruel that sometimes he lets you live. He lets you live with what you've done, with the destruction that you've left, that's been left behind, with the death of all of these people. That is how cruel God can be, is that he allows you to go on. And I thought that was an interesting theme and an interesting way of looking at the nature of God, the nature of good and evil, and, and, and what that means in the world. So I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to leave you with that thought. Um, I gave this book a five out of five. I highly recommend it. I highly recommend you read it. If you're really into the tower, it's a tie-in book. If you're just into Stephen King's early, gory, supernatural horror, you get all of it here at all 545 pages. I would consider it a must-read. I think you should pick it up. And devour it. You're really not going to take a lot of time reading it because it's a very fast read. It's got the pacing is really well done, and it will take you from A to Z in a short amount of time. A really big roller coaster of a horror ride, and I really enjoyed it. So, guys, there's my review of Stephen King's Desperation. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, pass it along. Thank you for a thumbs up and subscribing. And hitting that notification bu button, bell, button, bell, button. And um, sharing it. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. And until next time, I will see you in the next video.